guest became a real life hot topic in 1994 when she was the lead prosecutor on the O.J. Simpson trial. 22 years later, she had to relive the whole shebang over again due to the hit show, The People versus O.J. Simpson. And now she's got a new book, it's called Blood Defense. I can't, I'm living for this moment. Please welcome to our show, real life hot topic, Marsha Clark. Nice to finally meeting you. I've been meet meeting you. I just have been waiting for this moment. I like your earrings. I like your cool, funky necklace. Let's give Marsha Clark some shoe cam. Put your feet on those feet. Oh, man. Let's show them how I'm so scary the legal lady does it. I'm just saying. I haven't worn these heels in a long time. No. Huh. no. Well, here, can we give her some shoe cam? Shoe cam. Shoe cam. There we go. Yeah. Marsha Clark shoe. <laughs> so, Marsha. It's so funny to see the giggly like the rest of us. I think a lot of times people think of women in high powered positions to be a little bit hardened and not really able to giggle and enjoy life. Did you watch The People vs. OJ? I did. You did? I did. Every episode? Everyone. By yourself with tissues? By, no, no, my, no. I have friends all around me okay. to keep me from jumping off the balcony. And tissues, yeah. yeah. Wine? <laughs> yeah, wine, lots of wine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what did you think of Sarah Paulson's performance of you? Oh my God, I thought she was awesome. Me too. Oh. She was incredible. She really was. Incredible. Nice. I have to say, and I don't know how she did it, because we didn't meet, we didn't talk, the show never consulted me, nobody. She, they didn't consult anybody in the real case. So how she nailed how I was feeling on the inside was just a miracle. I don't know how she did it. Now remember, the miniseries was based on a book. So what you're saying, I think, is that they were pretty accurate in the portrayal of you. Yes which did not come from the book, I promise you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it wasn't written by me, you know? Yeah. So in watching, what was the one moment, or several moments, too difficult to relive? I think, I think the main one that comes to mind, actually, is watching Mark Furman on the stand during that thing. Because I was remembering what it was like seeing him on the stand and it made me remember all the things that were going to happen that I didn't know were right, coming. Right. And this time, seeing him on the stand, you know, in the series, I knew what was gonna come of it. Uh -huh. And it just, like, I relived that horrible nightmare. Yeah. Well, knowing what you know now, would you have put him on the stand? Yeah, I had no choice. Mm. The problem with it is, he really did find the glove. So what I'd have to do is call other cops to say, oh yeah, the glove was there, it was there, it was there. And then, the minute I do that, the defense says, yeah, but you didn't find it, did you? And they have to say, no. So who did find it? Mark Furman. Well, why aren't you calling Mark Furman? I mean, is he still alive? Yeah. Is he in LA? Yeah. So why, are, why isn't he here? And the cop goes, I don't know. And what do we look like? Like we're hiding the racist. The, the, the racism yeah. in Mark Furman. So, um, it, you know, while you were trying this case, there were a lot of black people who just wanted OJ to get off mm -hmm. reparations for Rodney King. Rodney King. Remember Rodney King had happened prior. Yes. It, yeah. yeah, I knew that. So I talked to the jury about that during jury selection. Yeah. I said, you know, our office prosecuted those cops. We thought they were guilty. We thought it couldn't have been more obvious. There was a videotape yeah. and we lost. Please understand, but don't hold it against us. You know, and I think what I said was, it's not payback time. You understand, do you agree? It's not payback time. And acquitting Simpson isn't gonna make right that wrong that happened with Rodney King. Mm -hmm. And everybody's nodding and going, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not. An hour later, um, another one, a juror came forward to say, one of your people in the jury box was saying, one of the jurors said, oh yes it is, it's payback time. So why didn't they boot that juror? Because um, she denied it. the judge called her into chambers and said, did you say that? And she said, no, I didn't. And judge Ito? Judge Ito. Let's talk about him. <laughs> okay, uh -oh. so well, I'm just saying, uh, you know, Judge Ito was very sexist during the trial and it was pointed out by a lot of women and women's groups. He addressed uh, Mr. Cochran as Mr. Cochran and then Mr. Kardashian, but he called you Marsha. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Cochran, Mr. Darden, Marsha. <laughs> was, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, how'd you feel about that? Did oh, you, I did not like it. Did There's you ever pull him to the side? I couldn't, you know, that's the problem. You can't, and this is what I, you know, I talked to my friends about and all the women that I've talked to since, 
you can't call the sexist on his behavior in the moment. He's not going to believe it. Right, right, because I'm the one, you know, they're never going to buy it. So what happened uh, during the trial was the president of the National Organization for Women right. in Los Angeles went to him in chambers and said, we think, and I've been having a lot of phone calls about you treating her badly, mm. like you never treat the men. And he didn't believe it. So she had to put together video clips of the way he was acting in court. Mm -hmm. And then he said, oh, I see. And so for like two, three weeks, he was actually treated me like one of the men. Because he would say yeah. stuff like, don't be distracted by Marsha's hem hemline. Like, like all kind of stuff. Yeah. So let, let's talk about hair. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's well, a separate character. There's me, and then there's the, my hair. It, <laughs> but it, that was 24 years ago, or something like that, where it, there were a lot of people who had that hairstyle. <laughs> Thank you. Now, <laughs> I mean, it does feel better to hear that, you know? No, no a lot of people. Uh, um, what was that? Is that a perm? Is that natural <laughs> hair? <laughs> Honest to God, watching the, the the series on television, I thought it looked like a geopet. But <laughs> <laughs> it really, it was a perm. I had two little boys, tiny, tiny. You, you were know, going through a divorce. Going through a divorce. And he was yeah. trying to take the kids from take, you. Take the kids. I cried. I did too. <laughs> I was so happy. I mean, to, to, uh, to, I learned, we, we learned so much about you and what you were going through. It wasn't like this boss woman in the courtroom. You're a woman's woman, like a lot of us are who work. Yeah. You know, yeah. There, there's a life. Whole life that you that you're dealing with. You smoked a lot. I did. I smoked. Uh oh, we're going there. Yeah. But first, let's talk about the hair. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So the, the hair first. The hair. Okay. So yeah, it was a perm. I wanted wash and wear hair. I don't have time to mess with it. Right. You know, with babies at home and yeah. gotta go to work. You know. So yeah. So you know, for some reason, I thought that was a good idea. It you know, it really isn't. Wasn't. Oh. Anyhow. And, and, so then, and so, but then you went and you got a blowout, and all of a sudden. Well, I had to because it grew out. I, my hair's naturally straight. Which, when friends that I met after the trial, oh. friends who had curly hair said, you had straight hair and you got a perm, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of flack for that. But so, no, I, I didn't have time to go back and have it cur permed again. Right. So I had no choice, I had to blow it out because it got so ratty, it got, even I knew it was just, you know, no, that's, that's way too bad. So everybody, <laughs> so. well, a lot of people, a lot of us smoked 24 years ago. Yeah. Um, did you smoke as much as the character was smoking? Because you were smoke-alicious. What <laughs> <laughs> smoke in, in the in miniseries. I know, I was a chimney, man. Uh, no, I, I, I quit. Yeah. I've quit since then, yeah. yeah. Now, um, how did things work out with your husband? Because he was being like a real MF. <laughs> Yeah, and you don't mean Mark Furman. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? Um, it all resolved, and we wound up with the same custody schedule we already had. Yes. Yeah. Oh. So we went to trial. I mean, it was, yeah. But now, it, yeah. You, now, you, now, your boys are grown. You, you, yeah, yeah you born. were going grown. through family court by day. Yeah. And then OJ a little later on in the yeah. day. If you yeah. watched, you know, it was yeah. a mess. Yeah, it was terrible. So now, how old are your boys now? The oldest one's 26. Okay. The younger one is almost 24. Now, were they part good. of the people holding court with you as you watched? No. The no, they live in the Bay Area. So they did watch the first episode. Oh. And that's all they could watch. Oh. It was really interesting. So my older son said, here's the thing, Mom. You know, they make you look like a victim. You're not a victim. You survived. You're doing well. Yes. You know. Yes, Marsha. Yeah. Yes. All right. Marsha's not going any place. Coming up next, we're gonna talk about her new book, plus I have some burning questions from my social media that Wendy watchers need the answers to. So keep it here. Maybe when things start to settle down again, but not just When remember. are things gonna settle down? You're writing books. Sorry. Here's Marsha Clark is still here. We're talking about dating. I was gonna ask her about her dating life, and she told me there's not much to talk about. She gave up dating years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, she likes to, you like to write. I do, I love to write. And really, when I started writing books, I found myself so busy that, and I have a caseload, so I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm busy. So you're on stuff. your sixth book, um, but back to you and Chris Darden. <laughs> I hadn't even Wait. asked her, I'm just saying that. <laughs> How did we get back to it? <laughs> um, it was implied, yeah. in my mind, that mm -hmm. you guys at least did the Mattress Mambo once. <laughs> I've never heard it called that before. That's really funny. I think it was comic relief in, in the show. It's a pretty, it's a tough series. You know I mean? It's a lot of sadness and a lot of, and there's a lot of tension and there's so, such big stuff going on and I think that was fun for them. <laughs> so that you know, was inaccurate. Candy. Yeah, no. They teased us. Are you, do you still speak to Chris Darden? No, I haven't spoken to him in about 10 years. You know, and it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not like, you know, we're not, I would always consider him a friend, but we have not, we go in different ways. You know, he has his life, yeah. and, you know, and I have mine, and yeah. so. I don't know, I would just think that, you know, when you spend such a unique situation with people that you, you know, and I'm shocked also that you never got a judge show. 
<laughs> like Judge Judy or something like that. Like, and Edo didn't get it and Darden didn't get it. I mean, this is the trial of the century and nobody came out with a judge show, really. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know what? It just didn't happen. And I think there's so many of them out there now. Oh my God. I, it yeah, feels like there's like 10 a day you could watch at any given time. You could watch somebody getting judged. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that is true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, Marsha, OJ's going to be on the loose in uh, 2017. Might be. Um, do you change your name and move <laughs> to Maine? Like, I, what I, happens? I do not feel in danger. Yes. I do not. No, he's not going to come after me. What are your thoughts? about him being released. On the well, we don't know if he will be or not. It's oh. up to the parole board next year. Yeah. And they're gonna decide based on how he was behaved, behaved in prison and what his history is and all that stuff. And, and it has nothing to do with the case in Los Angeles, so. If he was good in prison, let's assume that. If he was mm -hmm. good in prison, would you say, okay, let the man out, he served his time? I have no say. No, I'm saying oh. if you did. If I did. Yeah. I, I don't know what I, I don't. It's not my decision to make, so I, I've never but really thought was, about it. But if it but was, if it was. If I, well, if I'm required, you know, there are guidelines. I'd have to follow the guidelines. And if under the guidelines he, he, he qualifies for release, then I have to say yes, I'd be fair. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I was like pulling teeth. <laughs> Marsha, okay. Um, we're all I have tired questions. now. <laughs> look, I know that we're running over this break, but it's okay. Um, look, uh, Global Gemini has a question for you. Do you think Johnny Cochran really believed OJ was innocent? You really want me to answer that? Yes! Okay, but remember, this is what I think. Okay. okay? It's not, okay. okay. So I think, I think he did. Johnny's smart, he's a good lawyer. Yeah. He, and, and, being a, and doing a good job for your client doesn't mean you necessarily don't believe, you know, you don't know. Okay. I think Johnny knew he did it. Okay, Melissa Swanson says, why didn't you go for the mistrial when it was offered? Because it would have been worse with the second trial. Okay. And by that time, by the way, the whole, everybody in, the, in Los Angeles had heard all the terrible stuff that Ito had kept out. So we're gonna be picking from a jury pool that's even, knows even more bad stuff. So we were about Furman and that kind of thing. Yeah, well, Mill Rain um, asks a question that I think you've answered. Do you have peace today? It seems like you're very peaceful. Quickly tell me about your new book, your sixth one. Yeah, this is, so this is the sixth book, my fifth novel. It's a new series. Uh, Samantha Brinkman is the lead. She's a criminal defense lawyer who's kind of twisted, has um, a unusual, um, theory about justice and she kind of thinks the law is a suggestion that she can kind of ignore. And she comes from a traumatic past and it's kind of, it's a mystery, thriller, all kinds of strange Love things it. happen in it. Yeah. Love it. All right, give it up for the legendary Marsha Clark. The book is called Blood Defense. It's in stores now. And Marsha bought a copy for everyone in our studio yeah. audience.